a lot of people are looking at when you look at Solana and kind of this, the, the future of what Solana has is can it replace or does it have enough infrastructure in place to take on Ethereum? And many people are looking at this as a potential. Welcome back to Investment Tribe, where you've subscribed because you want to learn all about cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and other digital assets. Don't forget to leave us a thumbs up and enable the notifications so you'll be alerted whenever we post a new video. In this video, we will be comparing three of the most popular blockchains in recent times, Polkadot, Solana, and Ethereum. We will try to determine which has the most potential to take over the world, or in simpler terms, which is the best among the three. We will have three criteria. First, the speed and scalability of the networks. Second, unique features that they offer. And third, future potential and progress. But keep in mind that this come from our qualifications and others may have different criteria and outcomes. So without further ado, let's begin. We talk with great lengths about these three blockchains, but to summarize, Ethereum is currently the second biggest cryptocurrency next to Bitcoin. Ethereum started the whole smart contract and NFT movement, and they're in the process of upgrading to Ethereum 2.0 a new and improved version of Ethereum brought to you by Vitalik Buterin, the creator of the blockchain. Ethereum 2.0 is to Ethereum what Ethereum is to Bitcoin. What we mean by this is that Bitcoin is the OG crypto coin, the gen one of this whole blockchain movement, and Ethereum was established to fix Bitcoin's many problems. It basically started the gen 2. So Ethereum 2.0 is in development to fix Ethereum's many issues. But during the development, other blockchains emerged with the same goal. And this is where Gen 3 blockchains like Solana and Polkadot came into the picture. One of Ethereum's biggest limitations is its speed. The average DPS or transaction per second of the blockchain is only 30. So this is one of the main issues that Solana and Polkadot fixed. The former employs an innovative proof of history model to improve transaction speed significantly. Theoretically, this would support speeds up to 710,000 transactions per second. However, they are only running at 1,000 transactions per second due to hardware limitations, but still beats Ethereum's current 30 transactions per second or Bitcoin's 5 TPS. On the other hand, Polkadot currently exceeds both of them, with current projections suggesting hitting 166,000 transactions per second. According to its founder Gavin Wood, it might even scale up to 1 million TPS. However, Polkadot only supports around 157 transactions per second for some reason. But Ethereum 2.0 might compete with this too, as projections suggest that it can support up to 100,000 transactions per second. So, this incredible speed should effectively fix any bottlenecks that users experience right now. I mean, even the Visa credit card network only handles around 1,700 transactions per second currently, with a potential of around 24,000. Suppose we're talking about the long term in terms of speed. In that case, we are putting Solana at number 1. Polkadot at a close second, and Ethereum 2.0 at the third place, simply because it's not as future-proof in terms of the base chain scale. But speed is just one of the many criteria to consider. Especially with the hardware limitations, one might think that 1 million TPS is not necessary at all. So we shall proceed with our second factor, the unique features. This is important because historically, Ethereum smart contracts feature allowed it to stand out from Bitcoin. So even a single special feature may just be the right key to conquer Gen 3 and even Gen 4. First, let's look at the Solana network. It uses a unique proof of history model to help speed up its transactions. Proof of history is a concept laid out in a 2017 paper by the founder of Solana itself, Anatoly Yakovenko. Proof of history eliminates the back and forth communication between separate blockchain nodes. This is possible by tagging each transaction within the chain with a timestamp to show when the transaction occurred and then determining their order after receiving it. To make it less technical, proof of history is like a racetrack where every vehicle starts simultaneously. They may cross the finish line in a different order than when they started, but we can always look at their car's numbers to know who's number one and who's number five, meaning we can always reorganize them. This means transactions can go through much faster without bottlenecks and the look-back process can clean up any out-of-order transactions. Meanwhile, other models are like bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. The order is always preserved, but you can only start driving when the car in front of you moves, and you can go until the traffic clears. Again, proof of history is unique to the Solana network. So, how can Ethereum 2.0 still compete in terms of transaction speeds? For this, 
we will now talk about one of Ethereum 2.0's unique features, sharding, where transactions sit on a bunch of smaller shard chains and then the main chain aggregates those transactions from all the shards. However, Ethereum's most significant unique feature among the three chains is its level of decentralization. While Ethereum and Bitcoin are both truly very decentralized, the same can't necessarily be said for Polkadot and Solana. For instance, Polkadot has a central treasury council and a technical committee, very akin to a central organization. This council will ultimately have 24 seats and a decent amount of power. One power that they can do is if a validator goes offline or misbehaves, the treasury can forfeit their DOT coin. The council then has the power to pay those tokens back if they were taken erroneously or used that money for something else. On the other hand, Solana makes it somewhat difficult to become a validator on the network. One primary requirement is to have powerful computer hardware. Weirdly, despite around 1,300 of these validators, the entire network went offline just this September due to high traffic. Also, critics of the network raised some questions over its decentralization due to the Solana development team owning a large percentage of its validator nodes. Let's now go to Polkadot's unique feature. It's the ability to build new blockchains on top of the Polkadot relay chain. Polkadot supports building three types of blockchain. The relay chain that processes transactions, the parachains, which are custom blockchains that run on top of the Polkadot chain, and the last type is bridges, which allow other existing blockchains such as Ethereum or Bitcoin to interact with the Polkadot network, cutting out middleman exchanges like Coinbase. With bridges, Polkadot is like creating the internet of blockchains. The explanation for how that works was quite convoluted. So if you want to learn more, just go to the Polkadot wiki for more in-depth explanation. However, it's worth noting that Solana does have a very similar feature to these bridges called wormholes, and Ethereum 2.0 will supposedly offer similar feature once sharding rolls out. So to summarize, we have Polkadot's parachains, Ethereum's sharding system and substantial decentralization, and we have Solana's proof of history. And ranking these three, we easily decided to give Polkadot the top spot. Choosing between Solana and Ethereum for the second spot is much more challenging. On the one hand, decentralization is a big deal in blockchain. But since Solana already has wormholes built and working, along with the proof of history, we finally decided to give Solana the number 2 spot. So, Ethereum takes the third place. For our last category, we have their future potential. We'll start with Polkadot. So, they began launching parachains last November. But not just anyone could build a parachain. You first had to be selected by the community through a parachain auction. If you want, you can use your tokens to vote for which project you would like to see win out. And if your choice wins, you can get rewarded for participating in that auction. And as networks are adding new chains, it only improves Polkadot's functionality. In short, Polkadot's potential here is pretty straightforward as they can just add a killer new feature from any other blockchain. That's why some people call Polkadot the future layer zero of the blockchain that will run all other chains on top of it. However, Polkadot is currently sitting just outside the 10 largest crypto communities by market cap. Hence, there are ways to go if they plan to take over the crypto market completely. So next up, we have Solana. Solana does not have any considerable blockchain improvements in the future because the massive developer community is very focused on making dApps or decentralized apps right now. They know that an ecosystem is only as valuable as its best app. That's why Solana is rapidly producing new apps that can run on its high-speed network. Another thing about Solana is their unique choice of programming language for their development. They use the Rust programming language, whereas most chains use the Solidity language. Rust is a fast programming language used outside of blockchains. It gives Solana a much larger pool of potential developers to choose from, and it offers performance benefits over Solidity. The problem with using Rust is that dApps written in Solidity are easy to copy from one blockchain to another. So if a developer wants to run a dApp on multiple platforms, they can easily do it with other networks. But if they're going to run it on Solana, they would need to rewrite the entire thing in Rust. It's like Solana's gambling here. If they end up winning out as the go-to place to run dApps, its use of Rust could hinder other developers from other blockchains. But if they lose, it could also be a liability since the Solidity-based chains can isolate Solana's dApps. But if we judge today's developer community, the race might be pretty close. And lastly, we have Ethereum, which on the surface seems to have the least potential, but may actually have the biggest out of any of these. Ethereum 2.0 is the biggest focus right now, moving from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake, improving transaction speeds with sharding, 
and hopefully encouraging widespread usage beyond just the crypto community in the coming years. From a technical standpoint, this improvement might not sound as impressive as the other two. But Ethereum 2.0 is still Ethereum. It's the second largest crypto globally and the only real contender to possibly pass Bitcoin in market cap one day. In other words, if it's good enough for newcomers to this sphere, they might still take the crown in the end. It's evident now since big companies use enterprise Ethereum for their blockchain solutions. The so-called best technology doesn't always win. Remember that Betamax was supposedly better than VHS in the 1980s? But the latter claimed the victory in the end. So, for our last criteria of future potential, we're going to put Ethereum in first because they are the closest to being the most prominent crypto among the three and their plans are pretty much guaranteed to follow through this year. And with number two, we're putting Polkadot because it does have the potential to act as layer zero in the blockchain and we're starting to see the influx of parachain projects. And for the third place, we put Solana, which has a ton of potential in its dApps ecosystem but no significant innovations on the overall network. To summarize, for scale and speed, we have Solana, then Polkadot, then Ethereum. For unique features, we have Polkadot, then Solana, then Ethereum. And for the future potential, we have Ethereum, Polkadot, and Solana. So, what do you think of our ranking? And based on this, what's the best crypto among the three in your opinion? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Well, that's all for now. This is Investment Tribe. See you again tomorrow. Keep in mind to like, share, and subscribe.